And it is my great honor to send off next to Mariah Henkel from Community Supports. Thanks for letting me be here. Maggie, thank you for that introduction. Uh, so, as Maggie said, Mariah Hinkle, I'm a program manager here at Boulder County Housing and Human Services in the Community Support Division. Um, I know I've come and sp uh, spoke with you guys a few times about the different benefits that we offer. And I'm excited to talk about Medicaid today, as you see that highlighted in my first slide. Maggie just got done telling us about all of the awesome federal benefits for Medicare, and now I'm going to talk to you about Medicaid. So. Medicaid is really administered by the state, so we use federal and state dollars so we can cover people primarily low income for health insurance. Our primary determining factor, if you can get on Medicaid, is income. So we're really worried about what income you have and kind of relation to your household. Citizenship does impact enrollment on Medicaid, however, it doesn't completely define it. Um, and what I'm also excited to talk to you about, if excited is the word, is how the public, the current public health emergency is impacting Medicaid coverage. Um, right here is a quick slide, and Daphne, we could provide or the link just to kind of show you family or household size in relation to your circumstances of kind of what the income limit or what line of the federal poverty limit that you need to be at to qualify for Medicaid. So. Families have a little bit higher limits compared to single adults where it'll be a little bit lower income for Medicaid. Um, I always get questions of like, what's the limit for Medicaid? And it's kind of always hard to pin down without knowing the exact circumstances. So just to update everybody on the current status of Medicaid, right now our office is just getting inundated with paperwork. To give you guys some context of we are coming off of some food assistance waivers. So over the summer, we kind of just got to enroll people like crazy on food assistance. We didn't need to conduct an interview. Our verifications were lighter, so we were just signing people up. At the end of August and in September, a lot of those waivers went away, causing us to um, take longer to work applications and things like that. So once where we didn't need an interview, we need it now. I know we're talking about Medicaid today, but that just our work times to approve applications are just being pushed a little bit further out right now due to kind of all the extra steps that we have to take with um, applications coming in. So we also have an increased volume coming with kids going back to school and open enrollment. So not only are our actions taking longer, we have a higher amount coming in and we also have the public health emergency. I think my next slide explains a public health emergency. Nope. Spread, um, the, spread the word. <laughs> okay, we'll spread the word and then we'll talk about the public health emergency. So spreading the word, we have 45 days to work a Medicaid application. Um, I think this is coming up in another slide, but how you can help us is if someone's coming to you saying I turned in an application and I haven't heard anything, if we're still within those 45 days, I'm asking to not get extra questions to our office. Just calling us and making us take extra steps to look at it is only delaying the process. The more people that we can have processing, the faster I can get things done. With that, another way that you can help us is um, applying through PEAK. So if you hear of a client that needs Medicaid and they have pretty traditional life situations, have them apply for Medicaid online through PEAK. Um, most people receive um, an automatic determination right there to know if they are or are not eligible for Medicaid. We recommend that you do not use PEAK or you use a paper application if you kind of have some more involved life circumstances. So if you are, if you have a sponsor, if you're naturalized or have an LPR card or not a US citizen, I recommend you apply through paper. That process is a lot smoother of getting people entered into our system. If you are self-employed or if you have non-traditional household situations, for example, like I want to file for Medicaid, but I only have my kids part of the time. Another way that you can help us spread the word is to get people to the right avenues. So on my left, 
uh, you'll see that if someone needs to enroll on Medicaid or has a question if they're covered or not, please send them to us at the county. We can check their coverage. We can start a Medicaid app. We can do all of that. If someone is already enrolled on Medicaid and they have a question about a bill that they received or if a procedure is covered or um, how like their actual Medicaid works, I would call the state. So the state actually handles the billing and they'll be able to help there. If you have questions on how to find a provider or provider recommendations of who takes Medicaid up in my area for this circumstance, I'm going to ask that you direct people to the Colorado Community Health Alliance or CCHA, which is more commonly called, and they can help direct you to that part. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we're asking to maybe have a special one of these sessions dedicated to CCHA and how we um, get people connected in our community. So now we get to talk about the public health emergency and I'll handle this all on my own. Patrick Kelly, please jump in to add some more information. So when the current COVID crisis hit in March of last year, Medicaid said, OK, we know it's important to have people covered on health insurance. So what we're going to do is lock everyone in. Everyone who's on Medicaid is going to stay on Medicaid. You're not going to lose health coverage because you didn't turn paperwork in or because your unemployment put you over income. We want to make sure that you have health insurance. So that was great. We had people covered and it, we can't do it forever. So what we're dealing with right now is a situation where we have over 9,000 eligible uh, people, what we considered locked down on Medicaid in Boulder County. And as a group, we're going to work together to try to figure out how we keep the people on who should be on, and then how we transition people off of Medicaid, potentially to shop at the marketplace who are truly not eligible for Medicaid. Um, as of all the information that we have right now, that, that Medicaid is guaranteed through January of 2021, unless it's extended again. So that's another volume hit that we're going to take, but you might hear a few like odd questions from people that are coming to you of, I know I make too much money, why am I on Medicaid? Um, it's probably due to this circumstance. Patrick, you wanna jump in? I just um, wanna share with folks that that, um, that public health emergency is really driven by the federal government and where we are uh, in the pandemic. And so if uh, come January, numbers are still not looking good, then each time they renew, they renew for an additional 90 days. And that number is fluid. So as people come into Medicaid, um, you know, maybe they, they, they were eligible for Medicaid back in April because they lost their employee covered health insurance. Um, you know, now they're working, uh, they make too much money, but they, they don't get in insurance through their employer. They're going to stay all the way through until that public health emergency um, ends. And so that number of folks that's currently at 9,300 for Boulder County um, will continue to grow um, and we're continuing to work those cases, uh, but that, that number does continue to grow until we do get to the end of this public health emergency. I will put you can always unenroll for Medicaid. Like if someone's like, I don't want Medicaid anymore, I'm moving to California or a different spot, we can take people off based on their request, but it has to be their request to no longer be on Medicaid. Mm 